Exactly. I guess I'll just uh, leave it to people to ask questions. No need to vet. I'll respond as questions come in. Um, um, I have one later. Yes, please. Um, so, um, if we look at the the classification, right, or in the in the the the, pay, the general paper. Yeah. It seems to me that you're using features like uh, page numbers and all those things, right? And I'm yeah. just wondering now is, as far as I can tell, right, for the most part, most institutions, right, for a thesis, they expect a cover page specifying, like, what the thesis is presented for. So it would be the masters in X or Y, that sort of thing. Wouldn't it have been easier then to use that information instead of, like, using all this other indirect information? Great question. Thank you for that. So it turns out, if you look at the paper, right, what we, what we did was we... We use the combination of those all these different features. So the the model that classifies the the ETD type, for instance, we we actually we actually experimented with using text features, so the things that you have on the cover page, and then we also experimented with using page numbers. It turns out that using page numbers results in a higher accuracy than using those text features. So we did experiment with both. Now, granted, right? So, um, it it um, this is kind of interesting. I'm trying to think of a, a unique a unique case here. Of uh, I'm, tr I'm trying to, to think of uh, a unique case of. Okay, so uh, here's here's another thing, right? So it, it turns out that one of the other reasons, by the way, why we settled for page numbers is, and I just remembered, is that um, some of the objects that you have in the repository have no cover pages. A huge chunk of them, by the way, Zola. Um, and this is to do really with the fact that, you know, there's this manual process involved. So there's, there's a huge chunk, there's a black section of the content that doesn't have cover pages. So you just have a body. Uh, in certain instances, you have things that are uploaded uh, as separate bit streams, for instance. So, but the key thing is, it turns out that a quick and easy response to your question, Zola, is that using page numbers results in a much higher accuracy than using the text features on the cover page. Okay, thank you. This is uh, a bit strange, no questions. I wonder if I should. Uh, Oh, so now, when, whenever there are no questions, we don't know if the talk was. Uh, I have another one, though. Uh, yes. Um, so, it's just a, it's not really a question, but much more like a clarification. Like for the, for the beginning of the, like for the intro part of the session, you kept talking about people not making their content available online, right? Which then begs the question: Is that are you saying that essentially yeah. that people have papers, but they are not publishing them online? Because then, surely, even if, for instance, they are not in the repository themselves, like in the institutional repositories, if they are publishing, then they are available online, but through other means, be it Google Scholar, as you were talking about earlier. Right. So, so there's there's two parts to there's there's two parts to the re my response to that question. So, number one, uh, you'd be shocked. There are people that are publishing, but they're not. Oh, Zachary has a, has a response. Please, I can Zachary, help you on that. You want to say something? Yes, please. Yeah. Well, uh, for example, uh, Unza. Uh, so, Zachary, you're, you're breaking up. I don't know if it's just me, but you're breaking up. Um, maybe. As we wait for Zachary, so it turns out that uh, people. So if you look at if you look at um, this uh, image that I had up here, oh, uh, I don't know if you can see this. Um, what we've discovered, right, is that there are people that have publications from 2018, for instance, that are not available online, um, in part because the content was published in a print in a print-based publication, for instance, right. Um, so that's that's one reason. Right? Um, the other important, the other important part.
part of my response is tied to the fact that I always like quoting this, this, this quote from a white man that says, you're only as strong as your weakest link, right? So you might be this good researcher that publishes high quality research. You're coming from the University of Zambia, right? But if you don't make your, well, if you don't make your content available via the institutional repository, that drastically affects the ranking of your repository because part of what these entities that rank universities do is they look at content that is being showcased by the institution as a whole, right? So implicitly really, the, what the ranking, what, what those ranking entities will do is they'll look at what you have in your repository, which is why it's important that you put things in the repository. I don't know if that kind of makes sense, Zola. Uh, yeah, yeah, it definitely does. So it's not enough for you to just publish and and let's say, oh, I'm, I'm going to archive my content, or I'm going to just upload it onto researchgate.academia.edu. You're jeopardizing the ranking of the university. At the very least, what you should do is once you confirm that the publication venue has given you rights to be able to archive a preprint or postprint version of what you've published, you should be able to archive it onto the institutional repository. I hope that answers your question. Exactly. Exactly. Oh yeah, uh, and if you have anything more to add, Zachary, and by the way, people, Zachary is, was, is the former institutional repository manager for the UNSA IR, so he has uh, intimate knowledge on most of these things here. I don't know if you have anything else to add, Zachary, you were breaking up earlier. Yeah, yeah, I'd lost, I'd lost connection. My connection is bad. You can get me now, right on? Yes, we can get you now. Wow. Yeah, 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 what I was trying to say, so we are trying to capture that backlog of research material which is still sitting in most of the offices departments in the university of zambia so what we are what we, what we have what the, the, the processes we have put in place we are training the lecturers to self archive their work on their own the, in the comfort of the offices and we have even trained the staff the editors at the place so that they can self archive those journals which have been published by the university of zambia place from inception to date. Most of those articles are not in the report office. Thank you. Thanks, Zachary. Wow. And a, a, bit of, a bit of anecdotal, mm -hmm. uh, I guess, uh, uh, anecdotal evidence here. I, I have interacted with uh, colleagues um, who, like I remember this, this was probably one of, probably one of the most depressing interactions I've had related to this, right? A senior academic, uh, someone who is considered an expert at owns a footprint online, right? Um, and so I, I guess this, these are some of the things that we think are important, right? Uh, and people forget that that your online footprint actually um, is directly correlated to how you're going to be, uh, how, how, you, how, how the relative impact of your research is going to be perceived. Um, and I'm happy to say that people at the owns have become serious at this because I don't know if you can still see my slide here because it turns out that the each index metric has become an integral part of the promotions criteria, right? So before you are promoted, they will look at what sort of H index score you have. If you have a much lower H index score than the threshold associated with the position you are applying to be promoted to, you will not be promoted, right? So these are these are some of the problems, I guess, the issues that yeah. we are. Okay. Another ride on that one, right? Uh, 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 Another ride on that one. Addressing implicitly as we are doing this, I guess. Another ride. Another yes, ride. Uh, the policy now, I can I can safely assure you, it's it, it's done. Uh, we've been told. Hello, light on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We, yeah, yeah. Uh, the, we have been told to oper operationalize it now. It's been, it's almost done. It's been approved. It's just a final stage where yes, the you are breaking of up. Council here. You are just talking about approval. the policy. Otherwise, it's done. So that one again, that's the key thing because in that policy we have put a clause there where it compels lecturers to publish 
in our repository because that was the bottleneck. Most of the academia were, were resistant to allow the art articles to be published in the repository. So again, when we put it in full force, again, there'll be a major uh, surge in, in the number of articles in the repository by, by faculty. Brilliant. And when, when I'm not technically inclined, I always emphasize that the, the technology is probably the simplest part because you have control over that. The problem, right? So if you have a person who is involved with it, the problem is always here. This is where the problem is, really, which is why um, I, I stated at some point that uh, we are taking what we are calling a multifaceted and a multi stakeholder approach, right? Mm -hmm. And we think we see people as being an integral part in all of this. And I'm, I have control over ETDs because DRGS has a policy, a policy where each ETD that is generated at the University of Zambia, we eventually have to find itself in the institution repository. But because we have no policy around content generated by faculty staff, they're a bit reluctant in, in, in trying to make their work available, which is why if you go to the institution repository right now, the owns institution repository, you'll be shocked, right? Uh, and I hope we have a bit of time here as we have people are thinking about questions. If you, if you look at content by, by these different, probably very ugly institution repository here, it's, it's a joke, but it's true, right? Uh, if you look at, it's a school of education where I'm coming from here, right? 179, this is, this doesn't, that doesn't make sense, right? The school of education has, last time I checked, 130 plus faculty staff. Now, if you're saying that from the time the UNSA started, we only have archived 179, uh, Scholarly research how to generate it by people in the school of education. This is fundamentally wrong. It's flawed, right? So uh, hopefully the policy, yeah, uh, uh, and even publication, right? Uh, and people don't look at the bigger picture here. Again, you are only as strong as the weakest link, you know. Uh, so. In part, our ranking, I guess, is being affected because as far as people are concerned here, the only output they can see associated with School of Engineering at UNSA is one, right? Which is quite sad, really. But I don't know if there are any other questions or comments and contributions. Uh, our colleagues that are our practicing colleagues, I know a lot of colleagues enrolled in 5310 actually practicing this. There are people like, uh, they do what Zachary used to do. So I don't know if they have any comments or suggestions. I, I only wish uh, the Zika's librarian was around. She reached out to us to tell us that she was unable to make it, but uh, they're really seriously working towards their institutional repository. Uh, here's to hoping that there are other people doing the same thing across Zambia here. Um, any questions, concerns, comments? Corrections. No, okay. Um, insightful, uh, and I hope it will certainly make us think long and hard about how we do certain things. I mean, certainly not one of those things that will, will, will force you to think before you sleep, but I, I hope we think about these things and how we can we can improve on, um, on some of the aspects I talked about, right? Another reminder that, that uh, if, if, you're not, if, you are, if you're not one of those people who has taken time to look at research output generated by postgraduate students. You'll be amazed. There's really a wealth of information there. Uh, when I have time myself, I, I normally go to the repository to look up uh, interesting work that is being done. And it's, it's amazing work. You know, amazing work which should be showcased out there so that policymakers, so that NGOs are able to make more informed decisions. All right. Thank you very much for attending. Um, and I guess I'll have to thank myself as a speaker, as this is a tradition. We, we hope you join us next week. Uh, Knox is going to be giving a talk. It's, it's meant to be a final talk in this uh, uh, seminar series. Knox is going to be giving a talk on something much more interesting, fraud detection. So I do encourage you to join in. Uh, but if you're interested in some aspects of what I talked about, very soon we're initiating uh, a series of seminar series for our 5310 class. So this is more information science oriented, but if you, if you think you're interested in institutional repositories and digital libraries, please let me know offline and then I'll add you to the 
mailing list so that we start spamming you with invitations. Thank you so much for attending and so sorry for the confusion. Uh, for us, the 57, what you want students to stick around, I think we have a brief chat. Thank you very much.